We've got an update on our HF boat antenna video that we did a couple weeks ago. How to charge a Mac while out portable. Just how far can you be from a trail for parks on the air? And should you buy an amp for your QRP radios or should you just buy a whole new radio? This time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K at MRD. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, K at MRD at iCloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. We've got four wonderful things to talk about today. First of which is a follow up from two weeks ago when we talked about HF boat antennas. He says, We kicked ass today in the park. That's KI5 UTS and KI5 UPP. The ATOS 120A and the FT891 works perfectly in a float boat. We did clip a ground wire and tossed it in the water. That's awesome. We ran 85 watts and made around 70 contacts in Kilo 2361. We're already planning our next activations from the boat in some salt water. Bodapoda is in service. Hell yeah, man. That's awesome. And he sent us some pictures. So here's the ATOS clipped to the rail. Looks like he's just got a little jaw mount there. Here's a close up of that. And uh, they just threw a wire in the water. That's awesome. And here's all the contacts they made. Uh, looks like they got out pretty darn good, man. That that saltwater propagation is nothing to shake a stick at, man. It's awesome. And he sent this little video here uh, just kind of showing themselves in the water activating. And I thought this was really cool. So, hey, thanks for following up with us and letting us know. Uh, I really do appreciate it. That's awesome. Next, we have a question about charging a Mac while portable, and this really would kind of go uh, with really any newer computer that charges off a of USB-C. He's asking, thanks for all you do for the ham radio community. I've learned a ton from your videos since I uh, dove off into the world of HF about a month ago. You've earned a Patreon sub for me. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I recently started working portable HF, and the only piece of equipment that I haven't yet figured out how to charge while portable using my PowerWorks PowerBox Mini 10 amp hour is my 13-inch MacBook Pro, which has as Thunderbolt 3. You being a Mac guy as well, do you have any methods to charge a MacBook Pro while working portable besides running a power inverter? Would you believe that I do? Yes, I do. Let's take a look. But before we do that, let's actually show everyone what you're working with. So here's the PowerWorks uh, Power Mini box, just a little box with a battery in it. And on the sides, he's got uh, USB, a cigarette lighter, and some power poles there. The one thing... Uh, that you you want to change is this this uh, voltmeter in the USB uh, QC 3.0. Just get rid of that. USB uh, 3.0 is well, it kind of sucks. It's it's dead to me. Uh, you want to use uh, swap out just that adapter. It's just two wires. It's very very easy to change. There's a little thing here that that just screws on and off and falls on the floor there. Uh, good catch and you can swap it out. I mean, it, it might take you a minute to change it out, but you want USB-C PD, power delivery. And these are the ones that I've been using that I put in my uh, Big Geek box and they work great. I get them on Amazon, they're, they're actually 15 bucks right now. I don't know how long this is uh, good for. I usually pay about 30 bucks uh, for the two of these. I've gone through a few iterations of uh, these USB outlets in my battery boxes. This is the best one I've found to date. Uh, puts up to 45 watts on the USB-C port. And like I said, the, the 3.0, they just, they don't put out enough current. They really don't. You want that USB-C PD. You need to make sure you have a power cable that will handle that. And with your MacBook, you already do. Just use the charging cable that came with the uh, MacBook, which I would assume is USB-C to USB-C, and plug it into uh, uh, your your outlet there just when you swap it out of the box, and it will look something like this. So here is my, this is the charging cable from uh, that came with my MacBook. Now I have the, the mag, whatever the magnet attachment. I've got an M1, I've got the 14 inch MacBook Pro, but same principle applies. And you can see I'm putting 34.8 watts into my MacBook Pro right now. As I'm running, uh, I'm running the screens open, like the MacBook Pro itself is open, and I'm also running two monitors on this right now and running OBS to film this. So uh, it's not doing the greatest job of filling it, uh, but if you're not running all these programs and monitors like I am, and we can take a look at the display here, you can see it is in fact charging. 
So if we're out in the field, something like this should work just fine. It is going to be a slower charge. It's not going to be like your uh, your brick, but it, it most certainly will work. I forgot my charger when I went down to Galveston with Jason and Frank uh, earlier this year, and I managed to keep my MacBook Pro alive all weekend with just my battery box and this USB-C outlet. So I think the key is that USB-C outlet. So hope that helps. Thanks for writing in, and thanks for your support on Patreon. I appreciate it. Next, we've got a question about parks on the air. I love these. This viewer asks, how far away can I be from a trail and still count it when I activate? There are two parks here that I activate simultaneously, but VE5082 is the road adjacent to these parks. My antenna would be about 30 to 40 feet from the road when uh, I activate those other two parks. I would love to do a threesome, a menage a trois, baby, yeah. <laughs> I know in soda you're allowed to be uh, within so many feet of the summit, but can't find anything similar from POTA. Would you believe there actually is that on the POTA website? Let's hop over and take a look. So here we are. POTA.app is where we want to go, and we're going to hit this little hamburger icon. And down where it says, if I can move my mic out of the way, rules and documentation, let's click on that. We're going to go to this activator reference, and big in that, and we're going to go over here to activator guide. Oh, the author is W8MSC. Hi, Mike. Uh, so we scroll down here a little bit. We Under number 11, we see special considerations for trails. Look at that. It's right there in the, on, the, on the Parks on the Air website. So let's click that. Special considerations for trails in big, bold font. Your station must be located entirely within 100 feet, or 30.5 miles for our friends abroad, of the trail. Trails can be hundreds or even thousands of miles in length. There will be many possible access points. Do not depend on the POTA map GPS coordinates for trailhead access. They go on to talk about national historic trails, national scenic trails, and linear trails, all of which must have that same 100 feet within uh, the trail boundaries. So there you go. So what does that mean? That means that you, your station, your battery, your coax, your antenna, everything needs to be within that 100 feet of that trail. So if you're in those two parks and you're still within 100 feet of that trail, or you can get to in those other two parks where you're 100 feet from that trail, then you got yourself a menage a trois, baby. Oh, yeah. And if not, well, then you can't do it. But thanks for writing in. Lastly... This is, this is a big one. A lot of people are going to have opinions about this one. This guy says, I have a dilemma. I own an IC705 and a G90, both very good radios, but I lack a full QRO 100-watt setup in the shack and for going portable. Which would be a better option? Buying an amp such as a Zygu XPA125B for the 705 to give me 100 watts at home and out portable, or buying a portable 100-watt radio such as an FT891? Price-wise, not much between these two options here in the UK. Yeah, there's there's not much uh, in terms of price uh, here in the US either. Now, I'm sure the comments are going to get filled with people's opinions, but this is my channel, so I'm going to give my opinion. <laughs> um, for, I'm just going to tell you, bar none, get the 891. That's my opinion. Now, I'll back that up by saying that I own all four of these things you're talking about. I have a 705, I have a G90, I have an 891, and I have the XPA125B. Now, why do I say get the 891? Well, for me, uh, yes, the X125B, it's 100 watts, 100, 125 watts-ish, has a fantastic internal tuner. Tuners mean nothing to me. I don't care about a tuner. I don't use them. I use resident antennas. So that is irrelevant to me. But this thing is big. It's heavy. This is bigger than the uh, G90. It's bigger than the 891. It weighs more. It needs a lot of cables. You need two coax for here. You need uh, the power plug. And then you need interface cables to make this happen. So what happens with this when you take it portable, you got a whole mess of cables which not only means a whole mess of cables on the on the table when you're activating, it also means a whole mess of cables that you might forget one and your whole activation is screwed. So uh, there's a couple things that you would want to get, maybe a couple things you'd want to get if you go with the X125 option. Let's take a look. If you're going to use this with your G90, they interface 
perfectly together. They're they're just like peas and carrots. This Zygu DE19 data interface is awesome. Do not get that CE19 interface. It is garbage. I've used this. It was on loan when I reviewed another Zygu radio. If I were to buy a Zygu interface, it would be this one. This thing is awesome. So that's going to allow the G90 to talk to the XPA125B. Uh, it's going to it's going to have the tuning capabilities. It's going to follow the bands when you change bands. It's going to work great. But if you're using it with the 705, the amp isn't really designed to work with the 705, but hams have found a way. Now, I did it the cheap way because I'm a cheap ass. I went, there's a couple things on eBay, and I just searched uh, XPA 125 to 705 interface. So I did this 2495 version, and this is basically a cable that connects from the radio to the amplifier. It's just a keying cable. So when you key up the 705, it says, hey amp, turn on, because it's not RF sensing. It's not that great though. It's, it's kind of hit or miss. Now, my good friend Josh over, he's got a little YouTube channel called Ham Radio Crash Course. He went with this first. Both are made by the same guy. This is the ICOM 705 to Zygu XPA125B amplifier keying cable with RBI-1 interface. It's, it's a protective buffer. Now, you've got about, oh, $1,700, $1,800 worth of 705 and, and 125 here. So it would do you a bit of service to get this better interface cable to get the, the 705 to talk to the uh, XPA125B. Still not going to be perfect. It's still not going to have the features that if you were to connect a Zygu radio up to it, it it's not going to, you have to manually switch the bands. You have to manually tune it, all that stuff. Does it work? Yes, but it's very cumbersome. Where if you just get an 891, yes, it's going to be, I think they're 660 bucks or something I just saw the other day for a new 891, but you're going to get a Yesu radio. You're not putting more Chinese radios on the air. I have looked at this amplifier on a scope. It's mostly clean it's got some issues on some bands i did a test a few years ago uh but just to be able to bring one radio 100 watts you bring a battery you bring some coax and an, an antenna and the power cable for the uh radio you're just going to have a lot better experience plus uh you can do what i did when i bought my 70 uh my 891 excuse me that was my home base station radio and my portable radio. I just disconnected it from my shack and brought it out portable. So you get two birds stoned at once. And it's so much lighter. It's just, that's just me. That's my operating style. You ask my opinion, that's it. Buy the 891. I could go on and on, but that's uh, the XPA 125. It's more hassle than it's worth. It really, truly is. So hope that answers your question. Thanks for writing in and uh, allowing me to spend your money. And guys, if you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email. K at MRD at iCloud.com. And you just may be featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K at MRD 73 for now.